Hey folks, Rodney here in the murder basement. Unfortunately, there's not going to be an episode of Big Questions this week. Uh, one of our members is a little under the weather, which is weird because this week's big question was going to be, what would you do if one of your bandmates was a little under the weather? Uh, and what I would do is I would make a video in which I recommended 15 horror movies. I would break those horror movies into five categories, and I'd recommend three movies in each. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, also, just a little bit of a warning. Uh, there may be some spoilers ahead. So please proceed with caution. It's pretty much damn near impossible to make a bad werewolf movie. I mean, I'm sure Rob Zombie could probably make a bad werewolf movie with white trash werewolves and... Leonard Skinner on the soundtrack, and I, I don't, I don't want to give him any ideas. Don't, don't give him the idea, people. However, even a werewolf movie like Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory, or The Werewolf of Washington, which by the way is the only Watergate werewolf film or Watergate horror film of any kind that I know of, even those films are entertaining as hell. So, with that in mind, I'm going to recommend three werewolf movies. All right, so our first werewolf movie is from the year 2000, and it is Ginger Snaps, and it is freaking fantastic. How can you not love a movie that uses lycanthropy as a metaphor for puberty? I always like the idea of the boys going to the gym to play kickball, and then the girls go to, a, to the auditorium, and they see this. That, that would be good. Be a good film. It's also got Mimi Rogers in it, and Mimi Rogers was married to Tom Cruise, so I'm just going to guess werewolves. Probably not the scariest thing she's ever seen. Okay, next on our list from 2002, it's Dog Soldiers. Uh, basically, you've got a bunch of British weekend soldiers. I guess they're in the reserves, and they're on these maneuvers in the highlands, and they encounter werewolves. All you need to know. Just freaking fantastic movie. Acting is way up here. The special effects, which are all practical effects, those are great. It, it's, it's a great werewolf movie. And, and you will be along for the ride. The, the tension gets to the point where you're like, ah, they can stop, but it doesn't stop. It's a werewolf movie. And it's got the third Doctor Who's son in it. It's got Sean Pertwee, son of John Pertwee. little fact for you. Now people are into Doctor Who are going, he mentioned Doctor Who. Yeah, it's a werewolf movie. Got it? Good. Okay, let's move on to our third werewolf movie, and that is from 1984, and it's The Company of Wolves, and this is a weird film. I mean, for the longest time, I figured that in the middle 80s, the only person who was really on drugs was David Bowie, uh, but no, everybody was apparently on drugs uh, in the 80s. Angela Lansbury is in this movie, and I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, the lady from Murder, she wrote, was on drugs uh, when she did. It's a weird film. At one point, Terrence Stamp shows up as the devil, in a Rolls Royce. It is an odd film, but man, God, it's great. Just put visually beautiful. Just, you know, I, I love those films that take place sort of out of time. You can't figure out, you know, what year this is happening in. And it's created from a whole bunch of different werewolf lore. So yes, please, if you've never seen A Company of Wolves, don't, don't be, and you're, if you're young, don't be put off by the fact that it's from the 80s. I'm from the 80s. So there you go. Just as it's difficult to make a crappy werewolf film, it seems to be nearly impossible to make a decent haunted house movie. Uh, that's a big problem. You see a lot of, a lot of terrible, really, really bad horror house movies with, with Ed and Lorraine Warren wandering around, going, "Oh no, this doll is haunted." There, there, there should be a law. So let's start with the greatest haunted house movie of all time, and that is The Haunting from 1963. Uh, filmed in glorious black and white, uh, directed by Robert Weiss. This is one of my favorite films of all time. Again, made the year I was born, so I have a, a special affection for it. Do not confuse this movie with the 1999 remake. Uh, my friend Rob from Live Not an Evil, if you want to see him just go off the charts on anger, just mention the 1999 remake of The Haunting, and uh, and he'll he'll beat you with a shoe. He, he him and I are like that. It really it really upsets us, and I'm not. A huge fan. I know everybody else loved it, but the Netflix, The Haunting of Hill House, based on the Shirley Jackson's The Haunting, which is what this movie's based on. Uh, I, I love this movie so much, and I love the book so much, that I really couldn't get into that series, and that's why everybody hates me. And um, I think uh, members of the cast of that uh, show come by regularly and shoot out my porch light. So that's a thing 
that happens. Let's talk about 2011's The Innkeepers. Yay, from Ty West. Um, this film is fantastic. Uh, this is this is a great horror movie, and some people believe it kicked off the era that we're in now, the era of intelligent horror, uh, when I believe it, it probably did do that. It's a weird film because the ghost story is secondary to the friendship between the two characters, but it is absolutely fantastic, and it takes place in Pennsylvania. You get extra points for taking place in Pennsylvania. Nobody would have watched Dawn of the Dead if it took place in Maryland. No, no, it took place in Pennsylvania. Fact. All right, so the last on the list is from 2013, and that is The Woman in Black. And I'm putting it on the list because it's like an old-fashioned Hammer horror movie. Uh, it just looks great. It's fantastic. It's got Harry Potter running around going, oh, there's a ghost over there. And and again, like Atlantean Squiggy had pointed out, there's no gratuitous monsters. The only a monster somebody calls for it. A monster over there. A uh, woman in black, really, just put on. I know there's a BBC um, series version of it. Some people like better. I've seen the series. I kind of like the movie better. In fact, I like the movie a lot better. And I give it credit for bringing back old-fashioned, spooky Victorian horror, which is something that the world needs more of. And less, less Rob Zombie, in case I didn't mention that. Witches! Yay! And what do we watch other than witches? More witches! Uh, so, let's start. It's The category is witches, so we got to go with, from 2015, The Witch, which is such a great movie, and again, intelligent horror, and it, if you watch it, it's like somebody decided, oh, we're going to get in a time machine, we're going to go back to the 17th century, and we're just going to look in and see how things are going. Plus, it gave us the phrase, Black Philip, Black Philip, which you can use Whenever, if you take the kids to a goat farm, just have them point and go, Black Phillip, Black Phillip. And, and that is an awesome, fun thing to do. So that is number one on the list of your witch movies. Uh, number two on the list of your witch movies is going to be from 1977. And that movie is, of course, Suspiria. I love this movie. I got to see this back when I was basically a kid uh, on those early beta copies where you put them in the top of the top of the machine, and then it, it, it would just rip the tape apart. Um, that was spooky. Uh, but this film is fantastic. I, on the very first episode of Big Questions, we talked about movie soundtracks, and I said the, Go the Van Goblin soundtrack for this movie is my probably my favorite soundtrack of all time. It is freaking fantastic. I love it. It's like uh, your college roommate got drunk and decide to vomit into a didgeridoo, it would make the sound of the Suspiria soundtrack. Like, so, yes, if you've never seen Suspiria, and, and there are people who haven't, you've got to see it. It's, it's a must-see. I won't speak to you if you haven't seen it. All hail Dario Argento. Now, this is kind of weird, because the film I'm going to recommend next is from 2018, and it's also Suspiria. Now, it's the remake. Now, when I first heard they were doing a remake of this, I got really angry. I got as angry as Rob and I did when we heard about the remake of uh, um, The Haunting. That's, but no, this, this went the opposite direction. This is fantastic. Uh, it's really great. It also takes place in the same time period. It takes place in 1977. So all the news that they're listening to uh, in Berlin is all about the Beiner Meinhof group. Uh, fun fact, I once got kicked out of a uh, music conference because we were do doing like this round table thing. And they said, what's your favorite German group? And I said, Beiner Meinhof. And they cut my mic and escorted me out. Because they had no sense of humor there. It's a sad, sad thing. Uh, Tilda Swinton plays, I was going to say she plays every character in this movie. In fact, every movie you've ever seen, uh, Tilda Swinton is playing every character. Seen Jaws? She plays the shark in Jaws. Tilda Swinton is that good. Woman's a, a legend. Look, got a cup of coffee. Yay. Uh, cults. Cults used to be fun. Cults used to be half-naked, drugged-up hippies running around the woods, making old people eat meat pies with LSD in them, like in the movie I Drink Your Blood. Cults used to be a lot of fun. Nowadays, cults are like your crazy great aunt going, you know, JFK Jr. is coming back any day now. So let's just focus on three very fun cult movies. And the first one is from 1968. And it's Rosemary's Baby. Uh, my wife and I watch this movie every year on the eve of our anniversary. Probably why we're childless. Uh, and it is, and we see something different every time. It's fantastic. It, you can watch it. You can watch this film 
once a year for the rest of your life and you see something different every time and you'd really appreciate it. So that is, and that, that's a cult with some old people. Again, sort of spoilers, but uh, um, yeah, old people in cults. Old people are scarier, I think. Now, now I'm giving it some thought. Old people in cults are scarier than hippies in cults. Uh, I'll, take the, I'll take the Manson family creeping around my house at three in the morning than, than some crazy old person cult, like the My Pillow cult or whatever, whatever's out there. Okay, so next on the list is from 2018, and it is Hereditary. Man, that's a best cult ever. It might be better than the Rosemary's Baby cult. Um, it is that film is fantastic. Uh, I, I still bump into people that haven't seen it. I gotta be careful with what I tell you about it because that film is like shocking surprise, shocking surprise, shocking surprise. Uh, don't don't get too attached to the characters in that movie. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, so yeah, you, you must see if you haven't seen Hereditary. You must see Hereditary and also Midsummer from the same director, uh, which is a cult film, but we're not going to count it here. And we're not counting it because we have another cult film coming up. And this is the second appearance on our list from director Ty West. And this is The House of the Devil. Uh, this is, without a doubt, the greatest horror movie made in the 80s that wasn't made in the 80s. I think it was made in like 2008 or 2009. Let me check my list. 2009. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, House of the Devil. It feels like the 80s. It is the perfect sort of horror movie that you and your friends would come across late at night, uh, channel surfing in the 80s. Really fantastic film. It's got the fix on the soundtrack. Doing one thing leads to another. What more do you want? You know, you don't, you don't like New Wave. I'm going to slap you. I'm going to walk up. That's going to be scarier than anything on this list. Me slapping you because you don't like New Wave. Anthology movies are great because if you don't like one of the segments, wait 10, 15 minutes, there'll be something you probably like. So three cheers for anthology movies. Yay. Let's talk about from 1972, Tales from the Crypt. I saw this movie in a drive-in with my parents and it messed me up for life. Uh, there's a particularly memorable segment, although all the segments are good. I mean, I'm going to give you that. The, the Peter Cushing one, really, really disturbing. Uh, but... The segment that always stands out is one that involves a maniac Santa Claus. In fact, he escapes from a mental institute in the town of Burley. Uh, so he's known as a Burley maniac, which I love. I love the little stuff that's sprinkled in there. That's disturbing enough. But what's really disturbing is how hot Joan Crawford was in 1972. I mean, my God, you're watching this. And you're like, I'm really disturbed by the fact that I'm very attracted to 1972 Joan Crawford, because we all know the, the Joan Crawford from Dynasty, you know, Alexis Carrington, you bitch, Dominic Devro. looks like we forgot to take out the trash. Um, so yeah, that, that's something you're going to have to deal with if you watch it. But my God, if you've never seen Tales from the Crypt from 1972, you can probably even find it for free somewhere. Like, I'm hoping it's out there on YouTube. Um, please, please check that out. All right, next up on our anthology list, I want to check the year. Yes, it is from 2007. I cheated. I have a list. It's the movie Trick or Treat. Now, you've probably seen it, and a lot of people watch it every year on Halloween, but I had to give it a shout out because as far as scary anthology films go, uh, this is one of the best, and it, it has that spirit of Halloween. If you were just cram the spirit of Halloween into a movie, that movie would be Trick or Treat. There's just so much great stuff in this, you know, from the father carving the pumpkin, you know, why isn't mommy alive anymore? I just, I, I, I love this movie so much. And I, I, I could just, if I could just have it on repeat all the time, I probably would. Uh, I know that the minute we get near Halloween, I've got to watch it at least three times. So if you haven't seen Trick or Treat, you must see Trick or Treat. And then the last on our list is from last year. It's from 2019. So it's pre-pandemic. And that is the Mortuary Collection. I, this was a very pleasant little surprise. I didn't know this film was going to be that good. Uh, I came across it and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, it's a anthology that breaks the anthology rules, first of all, by not starting with a really strong story. The first story is good, but it's not one of the best stories in it. And they say that. They acknowledge, well, I guess pretty good, but can you do better? And they just start ramping it up. It is fantastic. Also, the soundtrack, uh, going to throw out uh, props to the Mondo Boys. Uh, the soundtrack is really good. There's a snare on there. I got a sample, but it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Very dark little film. It takes place in a pocket universe uh, in a little town called Raven's End. 
So there you go. You've got let's you've got three uh, anthology films. So if you add those little segments together, that's like a like a thousand films. All right, I've really uh, really enjoyed talking horror films with you. Maybe we'll do this again sometime. I don't know. I'm hoping nobody gets sick again. Yeah, but you know, anything happens. If I find myself in the basement and there's a camera, we'll talk horror. Bye. When you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help.